Hey guys, Mike here. So today's cult classic review is 2007's Hairspray, starring Nikki Blansky as Tracy Turnblad. In Hairspray, Tracy Turnblad teaches 1962 Baltimore a thing or two about integration when she lands a spot on a local TV dance show. And so we have Hairspray. So guys, this movie in the series before watching and reviewing it today, I had not seen it before. All I really knew about Hairspray going into it was the fact that it was a musical. Didn't know the premise, the setting, the characters, nothing. I thought, you know, if this movie's bad, at least I might get a good song or two out of it. But anyway, what did they think about Hairspray? Well, to start off with, I found that I was quite surprised that I actually knew the first song, which I think does a good job of really setting you up for what this world's going to be like. The world's a very bright and colourful 60s setting. The main character is really optimistic and nothing will stand in her way. And she absolutely loves her favourite dance show. And if you think that's pretty much everything about the main character, you'd be mostly right. An issue that I didn't think that Hairspray was going to be tackling was race and segregation. Upon first glance, I didn't think this movie was really going to be able to handle the sensitive subject matter. But I have to say that Hairspray does a fairly decent job. Though I'd say it handles the issue on a very surface level. Because they don't really go into why there's segregation in the first place. They don't really explain that, you know, each side hates each other. They just kind of say that, you know, it's the way it's always been. And most of the characters seem indifferent on the situation. The only real reason they don't have each side mixed together seems to be that it would hurt ratings. Not because they say that any of their fan base are bigots or the fact that they don't like black people or black people don't like white people. They just say it would hurt the ratings. It seems to be more of a maintaining the status quo than for any actual hatred reasons. Because talking to these characters, they don't really seem to care which way or the other. I'm not saying that it's not handling the issue well. It's more the fact that it's not really going into more of the broad reasons to why there's an issue in the first place. Though to be honest, Hairspray's not really that bothered about handling that situation. Though it is the main premise, it doesn't really want to do a massive deep dive into the characters, you know, hatred for one another. It's more the fact of, there's a barrier, we need to cross it. And how are we going to do that? With song and dance coming together because we all love singing and dancing, which is pretty much the usual musical trope. And you'd hope that Tracy would be the character that would lead the way, would have all the best songs and would make you really want to get into the story. But honestly, even though I didn't really dislike her character, I found that besides her first song, every other song that she had a solo for, I just really wasn't into. Pretty much everyone else in the movie, all their songs were really entertaining, showed a lot of characterization, and just, you know, weren't boring. But I still don't know what it was about Tracy, I just found that every time that she was singing, I just found myself turning off a bit. Though to be honest, I was really waiting for John Travolta to start singing. Because another big draw for this film is the fact that John Travolta is in drag. And when he actually did finally start singing, I was a little bit disappointed. Because I think the issue with his character as a whole, he just really doesn't go far enough. It seems like he's always trying to keep the middle ground of being a man and a woman, even though his character is a woman. But at no point is there any illusion that you're just watching a woman. You always see it as a man playing a woman. And I think if he did a better job of his characterization, or if he sang more feminine or something like that, his character might have been a bit better. But to be honest, as the story went on, and as John Travolta's character started to come a bit more out of her shell, you know... It, it, the character did get a lot better. Started to dance better, sing better, act better. The character just came so much more interesting as the story went on. But to be honest, even though I didn't really dislike any of the songs from this movie, I wouldn't say that many of them really stood out to me or made me want to listen to them on repeat. Because usually when I see a musical, I end up getting the soundtrack and listening to it again. I did that with Les Miserables, Rocket Man, La La Land, The Greatest Showman. And with The Greatest Showman, the soundtrack was much better than the movie. But with Hairspray, I just really didn't have any desire to do that. There were only really two songs from this film that actually stood out to me. Good Morning Baltimore and You Can't Stop the Beat or Don't Stop the Beat or whatever the song's called. And I'd heard both these songs before watching the film so no new songs that I heard actually really stood out to me in a significant way. And that kind of leads me on to my biggest issue with the film. I wouldn't use Hairspray to get someone who isn't into musicals to watch a musical. Because I don't think many of the songs are catchy enough and I think it is just a little bit too cheesy to kind of get someone into this whole theme. If I was to actually get someone to watch a musical who doesn't really like musicals, I would honestly pick Rocket Man, Les Miserables, or La La Land, or even The Greatest Showman. Though Hairspray isn't really a bad movie, it's just not really that engaging for someone who probably doesn't like musicals, I don't think. It's just a little bit too generic and too cheesy for my liking. And it doesn't really break any new grounds or push any boundaries. It's kind of happy with maintaining the status quo, which is ironic because 
breaking the status quo is kind of what Hairspray is about. So guys, would I consider Hairspray a personal cult classic and would I recommend that you guys should see it? Now, I find that musicals are really easy to become cult classics because they have a lot going for them. They have very bright and colourful characters, they have a lot of interesting songs which people can probably keep in their head and reminds them of the movie. And you know what, they're kind of really unoffensive at the end of the day. And I can fully see why Hairspray would be a cult classic to someone. But as for me, I would not consider this movie a personal cult classic. Like I've said, I've just seen better musicals that just do a lot more for me. But as for whether or not you guys should see it, I don't think Hairspray is that bad that I would say to actively avoid it. I just would say that I'm not necessarily recommending that you should watch it. Like I've said, just watch a better musical before you come to this one. Because honestly, I think if you watch this musical first before you see any other one, I think you'll be put off for life. But in all fairness, I think I did enjoy Hairspray a bit more than I initially thought I would. And who knows, maybe you might as well. Okay guys, that's my cult class review of Hairspray. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Whatever you think, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, I've been Michael. See ya!